What's up everyone, Richie here, thanks for stopping by. And I've got an overdue video for you guys. I had a couple people ask me in the past month or two if I had an actual video tutorial on how to hunt the roaming dogs in Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. Um, to this point I've only had a written tutorial, so I figured I would give this method the respect it deserves and do a little bit of a live tutorial walkthrough here. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do it live, show you exactly what like a one hour live real time hunt would look like. I believe that should cover just about everything, but um, let's just go through it here. But first, I wanted to talk about something that I never see get brought up for some reason, despite the 25 to 50 different rehashed YouTube algorithm videos that pop up about oh 10 facts you didn't know about roamers or 10 facts you didn't know about so-and-so game fire red leaf green blah 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 it's all the same stuff they never talk about anything important like this like you've probably heard you know that there's a roar glitch with these roamers that if they roar, they'll disappear from the map. Whoa, spooky. So first of all, that's not even like completely true. They only disappear when they roar after being trapped in battle through a move like I'm gonna show you right here. I mean, look. It's also not true because it doesn't happen in the Japanese games. I'm about to show you that right now. So I would recommend doing this hunt in a Japanese version of this game. Because you don't have to worry about the roar glitch, first of all. Um, and second, the tech speed is faster. So you'll actually end up, on average, getting about an encounter or two more per hour single hunting. Um, so I, let's just hope that Entei roars soon here. But I am going to show the tutorial using an... an there we go. He just roared. So you've probably seen videos like this, after they roar, after being trapped with mean look, you look on their location on the map, and it'll say area unknown. As you can see, Entei is still on the map roaming. Coincidentally enough, he, he only jumped one route there. That was kind of interesting. I wonder if we can land him again here real quick. Just have a little improv fun. Before I reset this. So Entei is the quickest um, roaming dog to hunt because it's alphabetical and it jumped completely away. Um, so if you're doing this on the Japanese version, it's it's the quickest because you can literally do it. You can go down to A through Z mode on the decks and you just tab once and he's right there and you can view his decks entry really quick. Comparatively. So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this um, in English. Um, because I think it'll be easier for t tutorial purposes to follow along. One reason. Also, we have... By we, I mean Hanger of Rome and I. We uploaded save files for people to use. What am I trying to do here? Um, so we have save files ready for hunting Raikou and Entei, and I probably should upload my Entei Japanese save file. I don't know if that's on there, but I'm going to do that too. We don't have Suicune yet. I need to play through and get that up for you guys, but I'll put a link in the description to the Google Docs folder. You can go ahead and download that if you just want to go ahead and try this yourself before, you know, playing through and deciding if this is a hunt you want to do. I'd highly recommend doing a roamer hunt. They're extremely fun and rewarding, and they're a lot different than just regular shiny hunt. These are the toughest, in my opinion, because, quite simply put, they're the longest at this stage. I would always recommend Gen 2, the original hunts, but these hunts are just as fun in a different way. So, the setup 
I'm gonna drop a link in the description again. Just watch Hanger's video. He'll go through the setup. But simply put, you just make sure you're at this point in the game. Say before you hand Celio the uh, the gem, and then once you do, Raikou will start roaming on the map. Now, the Pokédex doesn't save. So every single time you gotta go to A through Z mode, you gotta go to Bulbasaur, and what you wanna ideally do is make sure Bulbasaur is just one right click away. Then you hit the R button, and there you go, there's Raikou. His location doesn't matter right now, but you can see he is on the map. All right, so now we're gonna go after him. After you give Celio the gem, you just bite down, you're gonna make your way to Vermilion and then fly to Viridian. That's where the method is gonna start. Say you wanna make sure you have a fly Pokemon. You wanna have had a Repel on saved in front of Celio. And you wanna make sure it's easy to get to Bulbasaur in your Pokedex. That's about it for the setup. You literally only need one Max Repel. Maybe two, after you find the shiny. Do you want another one? But one step at a time, we're here in Viridian. We're gonna go to A through Z mode. We're gonna go to Bulbasaur. We're gonna tab to get to Raikou and look at its location. Lucky for us here, it is in on one of the six good routes that we're gonna be focused on. Only six routes. So that's the thing about the Viridian method. It's very concise. There's not like, you know, maybe this route is some somewhat in play if you go in and out of a boundary. Not none of that stuff. It's either it's only one of these routes and this is what you're gonna do, or it's not and you're gonna go in a building and randomize its location again. So as you can see, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but below me, obviously you probably see there's six routes circled. Route three, two, one, twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-three. So as you can correlate what it looks like, Raikou is on Route 2. And there is the, like I mentioned in the beginning, a written text version right there. Pop that up on the screen really quick. And that will tell you exactly what to do for each route that the rumor's on. Now, if it's on Route 2, what we're going to do is bike south to Route 1. So I'm gonna click out of the Pokedex, go ahead and do that right now. Okay, see we're in Route 1. You're gonna Dex check again. There's a one out of three chance Raikou could land it, could have landed on our route. And sure enough, we went ahead, landed it pretty easily. And this is why you only ever need one Max Repel. So the benefit is of this method over the gatehouse is A, you know exactly when the rumor is on your route, there's no guessing. As you can see, it's not shiny, so we soft reset. So you, there's never any guesswork, you know exactly if the rumor is on your route or not. You only need one max repel, and you're pretty much never going to run into a quote unquote phase Pokemon random wild encounter by running out of a max repel. I guess technically you do need two max repels because if you start with one on, it's gonna run out eventually. So yes, you probably should have two now that I'm thinking about this out loud. So, okay, you only need two max repels. Because we started with one on. I guess technically you don't have to start with the one on, but you want to for quick encounters like we just did. So same thing, give Celio the gem, boat to Vermilion, fly to Viridian, A through Z mode to dex check. Oh, and I also had this calculator up here so I can keep track of the encounters. Because as you'll see, it's much faster than doing your typical gatehouse method. Now, I do realize most people do that multi-hunting. 
And um, so you can see what I did there. Raikou wasn't in our route, and um, I biked up to this little house to go in and out because that randomizes Raikou's location, which is what we want to do. And the reason why I went into the house, as opposed to the Pokemon Center, which is was right in front of me, is because the animation for going in and out of that house here is super quick, as you can see. Whereas with the Pokemon Center, it takes like an extra two seconds. I know that sounds dumb, but that really adds up after a long time of doing these hunts. Because just think it... One, 1,000 encounters times 2 seconds, yeah, it really starts to add up and add some unnecessary time that you don't want. So sometimes you'll get encounters like our last one was very quick, it was easy. This one, it's jumping around the map a bit. But nevertheless, you just keep going in and out. Dex checking to make sure it lands on one of those six routes. So really, the method's pretty easy, honestly. The issue is it's just you gotta do the dex checking a lot, because it's only a 6 out of 25%, or 6 out of 25, which is like a 24% chance that it's gonna be on a route that we want, so. It's about a 1 out of 4 chance each time we go out of this house, it's gonna be on a route that we're looking for. And obviously a 1 out of 4 chance is a lot better than a 1 out of 25 chance, which is what people who do the gatehouse work with. Of course, we're just getting a 1 out of 4 chance to have an attempt at it too, so... Alright. So here we go, we got a good route. This is route 23. This is a really good route. This is the best route to land the roamer on because if you miss it, there's a really good chance that you're gonna get it on a rebound route. And I'll show you what I mean, but... When it's on route 22, you bike north to route two. Once you're in the route, you're gonna go ahead and dex check. And uh, we landed it. It was a 50% chance, so. You just click out, you go ahead and you bike in the grass, and you go ahead and get your encounter. It's really quick. So just like that, and then you soft reset. Go ahead and do it again. So I'll timestamp everything that's happening in this video so you can cut to specific routes in certain situations and stuff. But I feel like it does make sense just to do a live, just so you can really see everything that's involved with it. Now 
that on a good route. And I'll just show you what the Pokemon Center animation looks like. It's about the same going in, but going out, you can see there's like that little, just two second pause extra that we don't need. So that's why we're gonna bike up to the house to go in and out, because it's quicker. Alright, so we got the Raikou on Route 1. Whenever that happens, we bike north to Route 2. So on all the six routes that we're looking for, we either bike north to Route 2 like we're doing, or we bike, bike route south to Route 1, which is where the rumor was. So we've got a 1 out of 3 chance of hitting it here. And we didn't hit it, so... We're in an interesting situation. If we leave and go back into Viridian, there's a 50% chance that it just jumped back on Route 1. If that happens, there's another 50% chance we could land it on this route right here. Let's take a look. And that's exactly what happened. Um, so, to explain that again, the rumor was originally on Route 1, we biked north to Route 2 to try a 1 out of 3 chance. Instead, the rumor jumped south to Route 21. So when it did that, we biked into Viridian, which means the rumor jumped again, and it had a 50% chance to jump north back to Route 1 where it originally was. So that's exactly what it did. Because we left Route 2, that route blocked the Raikou. And none of this is even important for anybody to know, but in case you're interested in the intricacies. Once the Roamer was back on Route 1 and we just left Route 2, it can't jump to that route, it's blocked. Now Route 1 becomes a 50% chance to either jump to Route 22 west, which is where we biked, or it had a 50% chance to jump back down to Route 21, and we just got lucky and hit our 50%. And if you want to get even more specific, it was a little less than 50% because obviously you can randomize. So there we go, we go ahead and we land the um, Raikou, not shiny, soft reset. And just to show you, I didn't hand Celio the gem. So obviously if you dex check for Raikou, area is unknown. So obviously if you're doing this method yourself and you have any questions, just let me know. I'm always happy to help with the rumor hunts, no matter how far into the future you may be watching this video, if it's a, even a, a day from now, a year, a decade, unless I've discovered or Hanger has discovered something new with these methods, which we don't think is really even possible without glitching at this point. I do believe that Viridian is probably the pinnacle of the shiny hunting methods for these rumors, but you never know, there's always something that could slip through the cracks, but the chance is very slim at this point with these hunts. But if you ever have any questions, just let me know, and I'm always happy to explain in great detail when it comes to the rumors. If you ask me about any other shiny hunt, I don't give a shit, so don't don't even bother, but if it's a rumor, 100% you've got my full attention. 
It's like the bat signal, honestly, when I hear about one of these roamers being hunted for. Alright, so we got Route 23. This is the best route possibility because of route block scenarios that could happen if we missed it. If we missed our initial 50% chance, which in and of itself is great. So when it's on Route 23, we bike north to Route 2. We landed it. Simple enough, we go up, bike in the grass, get our encounter. Boom, quick. So at the 20 minute mark, about, and that includes an explanation in the beginning, got four encounters so we're on average for 12 this hour but again probably me talking for about five minutes or so so in the beginning discussing the uh, Japanese lack of roar glitch so probably really on pace for about 15 in one hour single hunting when you show me somebody who's got 15 encounters in one hour single hunting a gatehouse, I don't think so. And that stuff adds up quick, too, when you're doing this hunt long term like this. I mean, it's really easy, it's just long. And even that's uh, subjective, really. So don't feel intimidated by these hunts. if you. If there's anything I can pass along or emphasize, it's that it really is an easy hunt. It's just that it takes like a minute to hand Celia the gem and fly to Viridian each time. That's what takes long. But as you can see, there's really nothing that I'm doing. All I'm doing is dex checking to see if it's on six routes and then... That's it. If it's not, I just go in and out of a house and try again. Pretty simple. And I believe that some people are good enough to double hunt this. It's not something I... Not something I can do. I don't really just have the... I don't even have the games and stuff to do that. You can see I'm recording this. There's no way I'm going to be able to record a double hunt setup. Alright, so we got another really good route here. Route 21. It's a 50% chance for us to land it south on Route 1. If you're really feeling lucky, you could just bike right into the grass, but for sake of consistency, we're going to dex check. So we missed it, and there's nothing we can do when we miss from Route 21. So we gotta bike back up to that house and just go in and out, try again. Whenever you have a roamer on Route 21 and you miss, or Route 3 and you miss, if you miss, you miss, you just try again, there's nothing you can do. Um, but if they're on any of the other routes and you miss, you might have a chance to rebound, as you um, saw that we did a few attempts ago. In my opinion, this method is a lot easier to actually learn than the Ruby Sapphire Mauville method for the Roman Lattes because there's a lot more you gotta know when it comes to boundary movements. You gotta go in and out of boundaries to get the roamers to jump. 
But this is none of that stuff. It's just, you simply just chase it and then go back into Viridian if you miss and react as if it was just the first time you exited a house. And you just kind of proceed with where it's currently at in that situation. With the Lotties, there's a lot of biking back and forth between different routes and stuff. You don't really do that too much with this method. The reason it takes longer too is there's 25 different routes it can be on. And we just got one of our good routes. So route 23 again. I've said it a couple times. This is the best route you can get the rumor on. We landed at the most recent time it was on this route. Kind of hope it misses so I can show you what happens. But we landed it again, so go figure. Easy enough, we just bike up in the grass straight to it. And the hunt continues. So if you're watching this and you're wondering, it's like, is there any way to make this hunt faster? Well, if there was a way to be able to speed up Celio, there and somehow you could generate the dogs without having to get him the gem each time or after you give him the gem you can just transport to a city somehow those will be a couple ways to be able to speed it up if you could save your pokedex entry on the roamer each time that would save about 10 seconds each check as far as we know, none of that stuff's possible without glitching. Again, on average, you're going to have to go in and out of a house about four, maybe five times each reset, on average, to get used to going in and out of the houses, dex checking for nothing, going in and out, dex checking for nothing. It's all part of the plan to get that shiny rumor. At some point you just do this so so many times it just becomes muscle memory really. And then once you get really good and used to the route you can check them really quick just like that. Alright, finally, we got a Raikou on Route 22. Whenever that happens, we're gonna go ahead, pull up our little image, and you're gonna bike south to Route 1.
first time we had that route this time. Okay, so this is a little interesting um, because whenever it's on this Route 23, because we missed it obviously, we can't just bike straight to that route. Obviously, we can't connect to it. So now it either jump north or west. We don't know, so we got a dex check again. And then we're just going to bike to the opposite route, obviously. So a jump north. We can't bike back down where we just came. It's route blocked. So we got a 50% chance it's going to jump here. Um, but it didn't. Which kind of sucks. Um, there is a 50% chance that it could have just jumped back to where it was. We're going to go ahead and check if it's back on Route 2. It is. So again, we can't bike back in west the route we were just in because it's route blocked. So now we got a 50% chance to land it south. And there we go, we just landed it thanks to a nice route block there. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and just get our Raikou. Wow, that one took a little biking. As you can see, you'll get the hang of it the more you just keep going at it. And the more you do it, the more you'll realize how consistent it is. At some point, I expect we're just going to get like two quick ones right in a row. That's kind of usually what happens. You'll get like little long streaks like we just kind of went on. And then you'll just get, right off the bat, you'll get like two or three. And then once you get good at it, like I said, on a 50 percenter, you could just gamble. See how lucky you're feeling and not dex check. Try to save about 10 seconds. Alright, we got a nice quick opportunity here. It's on Route 1. We're going to bike to Route 2. Try to land a 1 out of 3 chance here. We didn't. It went west to Route 22. When that happens, we can bike straight to that route. We don't have to deck check because what we're hoping for is that it jumps and then jumps right back to that same route where it just was. Let's see if it did. About a 50% chance or so. Unless it randomizes. I don't exactly know what the randomized percentage is, but I've got a feeling it's about a 1 out of 8 chance. Because it happens so often, as you can see there. Alright, we got it on Route 22. We had this a few resets ago. We bite down to Route 1.
we missed it, it's up north to Route 2. So, in that situation, we just bike straight to Route 2 because we're hoping it jumps and then jumps right back as we enter the route. It didn't. It jumped west to Route 22. The good news is, we can do the same exact thing again. We can bike straight there and hope that it jumps and jumps straight back. And that's what it did this time. Now, well, actually, for the first time, this 30 some minutes in, have to keep an eye on a repel, and lucky for us, it just ran out. So like I said, you only ever need one max repel, but technically two, because you would need one to have in the beginning ready, but then you would just need one extra one. So it won't pace for about 14, 15 in an hour. Give or take. I think pretty much, even at this point, every situation's almost come up. I didn't have it where it missed yet when it started on Route 22. We've landed like two or three of those. That's all I need. Just need Raikou to be on Route 23 and, and we miss it. Because I want to show what happens with that. Hey, it's Route 23. There it is. That's what I wanted, and I want to miss it, and I want it to go to Route 22. So we're so you always bike to Route 2 when that happens because you got a 50% chance to hit it. We've done that a few times. Okay, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. I want it to miss because I want to show you what happens. If it's on Route 23 and you miss by going to Route 2, which you always do, but there's a 50% chance you're going to miss it. When it goes to Route 22, watch this. This is kind of kind of cool because this is the only time you don't have to dex check. You do about 12, so we missed it. If you miss it there... You're going to go here to Route 1. Kind of got lucky there that the Repel um, ran out, but... It kind of sucks that we missed it, but let's take a look just to be sure. Probably randomized. Oh, nope, it jumped up, so... Let me see if I can try to do this without getting a random encounter. Ah. So I could have put a repel on, but I tried to risk it. That's weird. Why is darn... I didn't even realize that, um... Had that Starmie out, but anyway... Um, so, no good route. We actually had, I wanted to, it to miss to show you that you actually don't have to dex check if you miss on that route. Because it's such a high percentage chance of landing it after you miss there. But of course, it didn't happen. It was on Route 1, so we go up to Route 2. I 
We missed it. We bike straight to Route 22 now. And we landed it. And then I did not add another max repel, so I'm going to do that there. So pretty much every situation I think's been covered at this point. But it would be nice to miss the 23 and then hit it without dex checking. Again, you don't have to dex check in that situation because a wrap blocks they make it such high percentage, but it didn't pay off that time. Of course, you could just dex check too if you want to be 100% sure. <clears throat> As you're starting off trying this for the first time. Alright, so we got it on Route 1. What do we do? We bite north to Route 2, that's right. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We got a 1 out of 3 chance of landing it. And eventually you'll know exactly where the route boundaries are to be able to check immediately like I did there. And you'll know exactly what it looks like when you miss quickly and you'll know exactly where to bike to. So as you can see, this will speed up once you get the hang of it. About a 50% chance to land it there. Twenty-five percent chance to land it here. This is a tough one, but we're gonna try it. Hey, and we got it. So nine encounters at the f under the 45 minute mark. That's about what most people would get just doing the typical gatehouses you see in that you see in one hour. They get about nine encounters, maybe 10, but the average is about nine. So we're already at nine with basically 15 minutes to spare for an hour. And that includes me discussing all this stuff too. So keep that in mind.
And I think no matter what, however you do this method, it does, it does get boring, to be honest. <laughs> I guess you could argue that for any shiny hunting. Any type of shiny hunt you do, it can get boring or repetitive, but... It's just part of how it goes sometimes. Got a nice 50% chance here. It's on Route 3. We're going to bike to Route 2. If we miss it, we just randomize, try again. But we got a good shot. We landed it. Let's go get the encounter. We get good at soft resetting quickly too. Especially with Raikou, you just see that purple, you know it's not shiny. Let's reset real quick. Start again. Get a little bit of a head start. Haven't had many like right off the bat, so. There we go, we got a nice one on Route 2. What do we do? We bike down to south to Route 1. We got a 1 out of 3 chance to land the Raikou here. We didn't. It went west to Route 22. We know that we bike straight there, so we can try to have it jump and jump back right when we enter the route. <clears throat> it did and it went to Route 2 North. Same thing, we just bike straight there. It's pretty easy. If you miss, you kind of just bike to the route it missed. That it missed too. So we landed right there. We're gonna be kind of conscious of our max repel here if it doesn't run out before we get to the grass, but we got the encounter first. 
And now with 10 minutes left, we can start kind of speeding things up here a little. I think we can get three encounters in 10 minutes. That'll get this total up to 14 in an hour, an abbreviated hour. And that's kind of like what you can expect, really. It would be like 15, 16. It's the average is about 16. Once you get the hang of it, of course, and assuming you're doing it correctly, as long as you follow this video, you should be good. Again, I will timestamp every little situation that happens. Alright, we got a nice quick one there. Route 2. It's kind of how the reset started. Last reset. We bike south. Give us this one. Let's get a quick one. It happens once in a while. Let's show the fine folks, but no. Raikou's gonna make his bike a little bit. At least people should be familiar with that. We've biked to this rack quite a few times. Uh, but there's reasons for that, as you can see, we landed it there. You can just trust me on the order of trying on Route 1 first. Planned all that out in the background. It's all taken care of for you. You don't have to worry about the percentages. You just got to know where to go. And that's exactly the way to do it. Now let's say we end up with, you know, you do a real hour, you get 16 in one hour. Obviously, you can't double hunt and expect to get 32. It's going to be tough to get the same type of results double hunting. But, um, you know, if you get the hang of it single hunting and you want to try double hunting, you could probably get around 25. And that would be a whole heck of a lot quicker than, like, double hunting a gatehouse. Of course, people wave bird and controller mods, so I don't even... No, and I can't keep track of all that stuff now, but... I just know it's easy to do single hunting like we're doing. I know it looks intimidating, but as you can see, it's pretty straightforward, I feel like. Alright, so up north on Route 2 again, three times in a row. I think three resets in a row. So we're due. One out of three chance. This is our third chance. We should hit it. But it doesn't always work that way. So whenever you miss a Route 2 attempt and it jumps up to Route 3, just bike over to this route for a 25% chance. It stayed in the same spot. Now we're just gonna try it again. Back down south for a 25% chance. We landed one of these earlier, so it's gonna be kinda hard to expect to get another one like this, but what the heck, we just keep trying if it's gonna stay there. It's gonna jump eventually, right? At some point it's just gonna randomize because that's what happens in these games, but 
All we can do is just take advantage of the opportunities the rumors throw at us. And see, yeah, so eventually it jumped all the way over, so. And a repel ran out. We'll just keep that in the back of our mind. Repels don't run out often, as you can see. That was kind of a rare situation. That that rarely ever happens, to be honest, where you're chasing around like that. All right, here we go, Route 23. I've talked about this route quite a few times this hour. We've hit it most of the time, and I kind of want to miss. So I missed, all right, so here we go. The problem is I don't have my repel on, so it's kind of a waste to there's a really good chance it's going to be on this route. And if I was a betting man, I would bet we're going to, we have landed the Raikou on our route. Oh, it randomizes. What do you know? I would have lost that bet. That sucks. So yeah, it's a really good chance you're going to hit it unless it randomizes like that. Um, like I said, it's probably like a 1 at 8 chance. In my opinion. I don't know the exact because I haven't been able to see the code for it. So now the Raikou is avoiding us. There's really nothing you can do, you just gotta keep chucking. Got a nice 50% chance here. Missed it. There's nothing we can do when we miss those. So we just go back up and randomize again. We got a 50% chance again. Let's see. Wanted to stop at the one hour mark. Because I'm pretty sure everything's been covered. I 
and uh, we'll at least get this one last encounter. So I hope this helped. If you, like I said, if you have any questions, just let me know. Happy to help, but I'm gonna timestamp everything. Just let me know what you think. Again, my name's Rich. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, stay tuned for more.